Hi everyone, it's Sebastian here from Wealth Depot. As previously mentioned in our non-concessional contribution session, effectively from 1 July 2017, the government has proposed to cut the NCC cap from 180,000 to 100,000. The proposed changes highlight a need for certain strategies to be implemented within this financial year to take advantage of the higher caps, including our recontribution strategy. So what is a recontribution strategy and how can it benefit you? Let's explore further in today's strategy webinar. Before looking further at today's presentation, I wish to advise you that the information provided in this video presentation is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. You should always seek professional advice before acting on any recommendations. So let's get started. A recontribution strategy involves two important steps. First, you withdraw your superannuation benefits as a lump sum, and then you will recontribute this amount back to your super as a non-concessional contribution. You will have to satisfy a condition of release before you can access your superannuation and subsequently meet the requirements to make a contribution back. For members age 65 and over, this means that you'll have to work for at least 40 hours over 30 consecutive days in the financial year you wish to make a contribution. When you withdraw a lump sum from your superannuation, the proportioning rule applies, which requires you to make a lump sum withdrawal in proportion to the taxable and tax-free components of your super interest. So why would a person bother going through all of this? The answer is that a recontribution strategy works like a magic wand to boost your tax-free components substantially. When you recontribute back to your super as a non-concessional contribution, no tax will apply on the amount contributed. This means that the total amount will be added to your tax-free component. As a result, if you are under 60 years of age and decide to make a further withdrawal after implementing a recontribution strategy, the amount of tax power will reduce significantly. More importantly, if your superannuation benefits are inherited by a non-tax dependent, such as an adult child, the lump sum tax payable on the death proceeds will be less owing to your higher tax-free component. From a social security point of view, a recontribution strategy can increase your age pension entitlements. If you have a spouse who is under the age pension age, their accumulation account will not be assessed for Centrelink purposes. As a result, the older partner can withdraw money from his or her super and contribute to the younger member's account. Effectively, the accessible assets value under the age pension asset test will reduce by the recontributed portion. In light of the upcoming changes to the age pension asset test, we believe it is critical to consider a recontribution strategy if you have a spouse under the age pension age, which is currently 65 years old. Now let's examine how a recontribution strategy can benefit you through this illustrated case study. Carly is 58 years old and has a superannuation balance of $1 million. Out of this amount, 200000 or 20% of her account balance, is tax-free, and the remaining balance is taxable. During the 2016-17 financial year, Carly decides to withdraw 400000 from her superannuation and recontributes this amount back to her super as a non-concessional contribution. She has not made any non-concessional contributions during the past five years. As Carly is under 60 years old, she'll have to pay tax on part of her lump sum withdrawal. The ATO will allow her to benefit from a tax-free lump sum, which all up to the lower cap, which is currently $195,000. Any taxable component above this threshold will be subject to a maximum tax rate of 17%. As demonstrated, Carla will have to pay tax on a balance of $125,000, which is a taxable amount of $320,000, less the lower tax-free withdrawal cap, which is $195,000. The total tax payable is then $21,000, $250. Now assuming Carly is able to recontribute back to her super, as this is a non-concessional contribution, the entire 400000 will be added to a tax-free component, which effectively increases her tax-free component from 20% to 52%. At the same time, the taxable component will reduce from 80% to 48%. If Carly unfortunately passes away in a few years' time, the non-tax dependent beneficiary will only have to pay tax on $480,000, not $800,000. Assuming taxes are deducted from Carly's taxable component at a rate of 17%, the recontribution strategy is able to save her beneficiaries $54,400 in tax. Although a recontribution strategy is a great way to reduce your tax payable, there are certain considerations to be mindful of. 
First, if you decide to implement the strategy before you turn 60, you will have to pay tax on your lump sum withdrawal. In the case of Carly, she has to pay $21,250 in tax. As a result, this strategy may benefit members who are aged 60 and 65 the most, as no tax is payable on the lump sum withdrawal if retired. Secondly, you have to be careful not to breach the NCC caps. The current NCC and bring forward cap for this financial year is $180,000 and $540,000 respectively. From 1 July 2017, the cap will drop to $100,000. Therefore, it may be important for superannuation members to make use of the higher non-concessional caps within this financial year. Finally, once you reach 65, there will be restrictions on your capability to re-contribute back to super. In particular, you have to meet the work test to make any further contributions. And as a result, for members who are close to 65, it is highly important that you plan well in advance to avoid any restrictions. Overall, I hope you find this session helpful. If you have any further queries, do not hesitate to contact their office and we will be more than happy to assist with your simulation strategies. Thank you and see you again in our next webinars.